a couple weeks ago, I made a card similar to this one for a friend who I play Wordle with. And if you have not played Wordle yet, it's just a simple word game online that you can play once a day. There are some variations. There's Quirtle, which is four of them at once, and Octortle, which is eight of them at once. There's even a Nerdle, which I also play, which is math related. It's just numbers and operations. But I wanted to send this to my friend because we play together all the time and we share the results every day. We're kind of nerdy. Um, but I, his birthday has passed now and so now I can share this online. This was inspired by not only my gameplay um, with this person, but also by Ashley Pfeiffer, a fellow demonstrator who posted, uh, posted her version of this, two versions actually, and got me to thinking, oh, what a perfect idea for my friend. So if you know of anybody that plays Wordle, this would be a great card to make for them. And it's not hard if you have the playful alphabet dies. We're going to bring in to start our playful alphabet dies. And these dies are great for customizing cards. Whether you want a special message, you want to play Wordle like we're doing today, or maybe you want to add a year for maybe a graduation card. There are letters and numbers and punctuation marks. You could make a hashtag, that would be fun. So we're going to use Happy Bee Day. Another great benefit of this particular set of dies, let me see, get this where you can see it, is that some of the letters are duplicated. For instance, P. P is duplicated. Now it's an uppercase P. See when I flip it over, it's an uppercase P, but you could also make it a lowercase D. The one letter that I wish were duplicated that is not is the Y because Happy B Day uses two Ys. So we will have to make two passes in our stamp and cut and emboss machine. So here's B. I'm going to use the equal sign, only half of it for the hyphen. And I need a D, A, and then another Y. So now we're going to bring in a white scrap of cardstock. And I've also got a piece of my, um, what do I call this? The adhesive sheets. So here are the adhesive sheets. And I've just got a scrap left over from another project. And I'm going to put that right here. Now, one of the things you want to make sure you're doing is making sure your scrap is a little bit larger than your piece of adhesive. And that's just because you don't want to gum up your machine. So sometimes when you have these adhesive scraps, there's no real easy way to get into it. So you just have to use your fingernail and try to pry those two layers apart. I think my Stampin' Pick tool might help out in this particular case a little bit. Let's see, maybe not. All right, we'll just, we'll just keep at it. Oh, there it is. I see it, I see it, I see it. I just can't get at it. All right, so it's separated right there. All right. So here's the backing without the sticky. Here's the one with the sticky. And I'm just going to lay my piece of basic white cardstock right over the top. And this is what I'm going to cut my letters out with. Let's see how many we can get on here. I'll go ahead and bring in my stamp and cut emboss machine. It is easier to lay everything out on the machine so you don't have to pick it up and disrupt everything. So we'll need our cutting plate, number one. We need number two. 
We need a number three. This is getting a little warped. Almost time for some new ones again. Let's go ahead and put my, put my piece of basic white on here. And I'm going to put it at an angle so everything's not going through at once. And I think this would actually be better because I can fit two next to each other on here. There we go. I got quite a few on that scrap. And this was just a scrap I had from my scrap bin. Just cutting out letters is a great way to use up those scraps. And now these letters will have adhesive on the back, making them much easier to lay down. Okay. Let's clean this up a bit. And we're going to run my equal sign through. I made it and another Y through. I made it on all, everything except for those two things. So I'll get another scrap out and put my adhesive on here and die cut those and be right back. All right, we'll just pop these two letters out. Well, one's a letter and one's a hyphen. So my equal sign, actually, if you could do two of these cards at once because your equal sign gets you two hyphens. So there's one, there's another for another time. Usually for my dies, I replace or I take a piece of magnetic, um, a magnetic layer and put it on here so that I can just put my dies on. Not so with this one because, let me hold it closer, you can see that there is an outline where each letter goes. So this helps me make sure that I am not leaving behind any of my letters to get lost in the creative process. Because these guys are really small and it would be very easy to lose track of them. So just by taking a, a careful look at the sheet, when I think I've put them all away, I can tell if I'm missing something. So for instance, looks like it's all full except for this one missing spot. There's my equal sign. And so now I know I have everything. I can put those away with confidence that I'm not losing anything. So now I'm going to bring in the color for this card. And if you have played Wordle, you know that there are three basic colors involved. So you have gray, and let's try, let's see if we can get out a piece of basic gray cardstock. And one inch squares are perfect for this. And I actually, I did cut, I knew I cut it, a one inch wide piece. Now I wanna cut it one inch in the other direction because I want it to be a one inch square. It's very important that you try to cut these exactly the same each time. So not just close to the one mark, you know, if you're always just barely seeing the one inch line, make sure every time you cut, you're seeing the one inch line. And I know I only need three of these so with Wordle, when you guess a letter that is not in the word, it appears in a gray block. And if you get um, guess a letter that appears in the word, but it's in the wrong spot, it shows up as a yellow block. And if you guess a letter that's in the word and it's in the right spot, it's green, it's a bright green. So if I were to guess a word and I saw this, that would mean of the five letters, I have one in the right spot. I have one that's in the puzzle, but it's in the wrong spot. So I would then guess again. 
And so now I'm gonna make sure that my last word, everything's right. And you would not have to do this. You could have another wrong guess and it would still work out. But I think we're gonna end up on a happy note. So that's how the front of my card is going to be. I need to put this on a basic black layer. Now you can see that five one inch squares, that spans five inches when they're all pushed together. We wanna to give them a little bit of space in between. So I'm gonna think it's like a 16th of an inch, um, maybe an eighth of an inch, but I'm gonna try for a very tiny, tiny little bit, probably a 16th of an inch. So I need one, two, three, four sixteenths, that's a quarter of an inch in between those letters. And I probably want a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch on each side, which is another quarter. So a quarter and a quarter make a half. So I think maybe I'll only go with um, a sixteenth on the edge here as well. So doing a little bit of math, I know that I need a sixteenth, and then I've got my one inch, a sixteenth, a one inch, a sixteenth, a one inch, a sixteenth gap, a one inch, another sixteenth inch gap, a one inch, so one, two, three, four, five letters, and then I want another sixteenth inch border. So if I add that up, that's one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, six sixteenths, which is three eighths. I've done the math for you. I'm a math teacher, you can trust me. For the other dimension, so five and three eighths is what I need my black layer to be in length. The other direction, I have one inch, I have a sixteenth, a one inch, a sixteenth, a one inch, and another sixteenth. So I need something that is two and three sixteenths inches wide. So my card layer that I need is five and three eighths by two and three sixteenths. Now you can fudge it a little bit and cut afterwards, that's fine too. But let me go ahead and get my piece of black cardstock out. And I'm going to cut this. So five and three eighths, I said. So you know what, I probably, I would probably round this up to five and four eighths, which is five and a half, which means I'm also gonna have to add one sixteenth here, or, or actually two. So I'd probably make this five and a half. It's going to be okay if it's not exact. People are still gonna get the idea. And two and five sixteenths. So a sixteenth is each one of these little tick marks here. So here's two, I'm gonna count one, two, three, four. It's just a little bit past the quarter. It's the next one past the quarter. So here is the layer that I'm gonna be putting everything on. Now I don't actually, while I could have put adhesive backing on these, I did not, and that's to give me a little bit of playroom when I'm putting these on. So I am going to kind of put these on just to see if they fit right. So you can see I have a bigger gaps over here than over here. So I would just go ahead and manipulate these a little bit so I can have at least a good first first attempt, have an idea of where I'm putting things. So this card takes a little bit of TLC for sure. And so I can see I need to come down a little bit too. But you know, the person I'm sending this card to, I have a pretty close relationship with. 
Um, we're colleagues, he's my boss, he's um, someone I've known for a very long time. We get to get, we go camping together, our families. We love to play games, so he's my Wordle buddy. He's one of them, I have a few. So that's what it's gonna look like. So now I'm gonna take my liquid glue. I'm gonna clean off the tip. It was, it was, it has a bubble in it somewhere, so it's misbehaving. I'm gonna put my glue on the back of this. And what's nice about the liquid glue is that it gives you some wiggle room, some time to get things just right. So my glue has a bubble in it and it doesn't want to stop coming out. The bubble is forcing the air out and making it kind of ugly. All right, so I'm gonna move this down a little bit because it's got a little bit of play in it still. I'm trying to keep everything as straight as possible. Some people might want to bring in a ruler and say, okay, I'm going to make sure everything is lined up right up against the bottom of this ruler. That's fine if you'd like to do that. Oops, I'm trying to move this and I moved it too much. I'm good with getting it pretty close with an eyeball. There is my Wordle screen. So when you play Wordle, when you're done, you can share it with people you play against or with, and they can see how you did without knowing the words that you guessed. That way, if they haven't played, you're not spoiling it for them. So I'll often share this, like this person would then know, hey, I did it in only two attempts, which is really good. I don't think I've gotten two attempts yet. My husband has, my friend has, I have not. I'm just gonna take these letters, the backing off these letters, center them in their spots. last Y down and there we go happy B day so now we just need to add it to a card um, in whatever manner we choose while I like the clean look of this let's see if we can change it up a bit let's bring in a car black card base obviously I don't want to go black on black because that's a little bit too much black, nothing stands out enough. We need something that's gonna give it a little pop of color. So what happens if I add little strips here? I could make one, but I had these little strips of basic white. So you can make them, those borders the same. I think I like that. I think I like that. So let's go ahead and we are going to adhere those little strips, those strips that seem to be left over from so many different projects. Let's attach them. The top here, oops, I don't wanna, need to make, the, make sure it's nice and parallel. Come on, come on. Let's see, it's not quite right. All right. 
I need to pick it up. I can't. That's pretty good. And then we'll do the same thing on the other edge. Try to make it about the same width. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna put this right here on my card. What would also look nice is if you add a textured layer to this piece of basic black. I'm gonna keep it simple for our purposes here. Let's go ahead. Pop this up on dimensionals. And I wanna put it a little bit closer to the top than to the bottom. There we go. Look at how everything just pops. So this is a, a great card for your Wordle friends, for a guy especially. Um, you know, it's not very fancy, but it did take a lot of love and inspiration. And look, only two guesses to get birthday. So for the inside, I'm just gonna create a, a layer and I will probably, I've already sent Josh his card. So I will add a layer in here and cut out some letters and put their first name in there as well for this next recipient. So it will be ready to go. So I, I changed my mind on the inside and I just took some leftover one inch squares and put them down the side. If I wanted to write a four letter word like love, I could do that down here or someone's name, like my son's name, Matt, M-A-T-T. Um, lots of different things you could do here, um, but it just, it keeps that same kind of color block feel and ties everything together nicely.